Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The G7 has taken stock of the global energy crisis and the need to preserve the planet by accelerating the decarbonization of the energy sector and deployment of renewables. The countries reiterated their commitment to the Paris Agreement, keeping a limit of 1.5 degrees within reach. The G7 said that ensuring economic resilience and economic security globally remains the best protection against the weaponization of economic vulnerabilities. Joining us now to talk about the G7 outcomes, especially on the energy crisis and outlook for energy markets, is Mr. Fatih Birol, Executive Director of the International Energy Agency. Mr. Birol, thank you very much for joining us here. In October last year, you had said that the world is in its first and truly global energy crisis. What perspective did you give the G7 on the current state of the energy crisis and your outlook? Uh, thank you. I just uh, returned uh, this morning uh, from uh, Hiroshima uh, back to my work in uh, Paris, back to my office in Paris. Um, I can tell you that the G7 meeting uh, this year together with the leaders of the uh, India, Prime Minister Modi was the uh, Brazil, uh, uh, President uh, uh, De Lula was uh, the uh, Joko Widodo of uh, Indonesia, uh, Australian uh, Prime Minister, Korean President, and several other uh, countries gave a rather homogeneous perspective as far as the energy and climate change is concerned. Uh, I told them in the last uh, G7 meeting, it was in El Mao, in Germany uh, last uh, year, and Prime Minister Modi was, of course, uh, uh, there, uh, that the uh, global energy crisis has started. And I said, this may well be an additional driver for clean energy transitions. And this year, uh, I told them that uh, what uh, we, International Energy Agency, has uh, thought it could be possible is happening. Clean energy transitions are being turbocharged much faster than many think. I told them how solar, wind, electric cars, nuclear power, energy efficiency is exploding the growth around the world. And as such, they are becoming a real force in global energy markets. So we have discussed this and the uh, the discussion among the world leaders, uh, the leaders I mentioned uh, to you, were rather, to my surprise, homogeneous, that the, all the countries were very keen to see clean energy transition is happening, and they want to take a important role in the global clean energy transition. For example, uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi rightly so mentioned the huge success story in India as far as the solar energy penetration is uh, uh, concerned. And uh, President Lula of uh, Brazil again supported our thesis in terms of the uh, uh, bioenergy, how strongly it is uh, uh, growing. And uh, all the leaders have once again reaffirmed uh, their commitment to international climate uh, uh, goals. And uh, uh, I think uh, Japan made a very good move that uh, that very G7 meeting to link it to the G20 presidency of uh, India, which in my view uh, was a, a very intelligent uh, decision from the point of view of Prime Minister Kishida of uh, Japan. Right. Mr. Birol, you're speaking about the bridge between G7 and G20. What is the main message that you would like to be carried over from the G7 in Hiroshima to India during the G20 Leaders Summit in September? There are two things. One a bit on the maybe seen micro level, one on the macro level. On the micro level, I mentioned that we are seeing the clean energy transition is happening very strongly. And again, solar, wind, nuclear, electric cars, and energy efficiency. And energy efficiency is very important. And many countries have improved their energy efficiency. And as I mentioned to the world leaders there uh, in Hiroshima, if the world would, in addition to putting standards and norms for the cars, for the air conditioners, refrigerators, 
if they could empower the consumers uh, as it was highlighted in the life mission of Prime Minister Modi, this would give very, very good results. So this was the first one I would like to see, as I said, micro level, which could be hopefully a, a transfer uh, to uh, G20 in uh, India uh, this year. And we are, as I mentioned, the Prime Minister Modi uh, the day for yesterday, we are at the IEA uh, coming up uh, with a report showing the importance of uh, a mission life uh, and its impact to reduce emissions, to improve the economy and others. This is the first one. The second one, mm. while everybody, uh, all the world leaders agreed that we have to reach the, uh, our international climate goals, I think, as I highlighted again uh, in the meeting, the, for me, the fault line of reaching international climate goals is how we are going to finance. And the, uh, on the macro level, uh, the issue is uh, for me that how we are going to finance clean energy transition in developing countries. I have highlighted this issue uh, in Hiroshima. We have many challenges to reach our climate goals globally in US, in Canada, Europe, Japan, and in China. But for me, the fault line of the world will be or will not be able to reach uh, climate goals is whether or not we can have enough financing for clean energy for developing countries. For me, a G20 president of India, India, a de facto leader of the global south, I hope uh, will make this uh, as an important point mm. uh, for G20 presidency with hopefully with a, a successful uh, outcome. So this is the major bridge I see between uh, Hiroshima mm. and the G20 presidency of uh, India. Right. Uh, Mr. Birol, where do things stand in the global energy crisis, your expectation from the winter? I think this uh, winter, how uh, we are going to see the oil markets will be depending on two uh, important factors. Uh, the How strongly Chinese uh, economy will uh, rebound. With the current expectations, we ex expect this year global oil demand uh, will increase about uh, slightly more than 2 million barrels per day, out of which 60% of it will come from China alone, which will put pressure on the uh, markets is 2 million barrels per day. And the second is how the producing countries will respond uh, to that. Mm -hmm. Because if the producing countries continue with their current uh, policies, we may well see a tightness in the second half of this year uh, towards winter in the global oil markets. Right. Uh, uh, how do you expect the volatility Perfect. in uh, oil markets to be, uh, Mr. Birol, this year? I think we will, uh, uh, we may see volatility in the markets because of uh, the uh, demand uh, might be very strong, especially second half, if the uh, we see that the not enough uh, supply coming to markets. Uh, but I hope uh, this volatility doesn't take place because it is, it is not good, especially for the uh, developing countries who import a lot of uh, oil and gas uh, from uh, the uh, producing uh, countries. Impact of the global energy crisis on the clean energy transition. What should governments do to accelerate the clean energy transition and your expectations from COP28? So I expect that the clean energy transition uh, being turbocharged uh, this year and uh, some of the clean energy options are uh, moving better than the others. The best ones today we see is the solar, a huge growth in, in solar uh, and uh, electric cars. Mm. Let me give you one example. Two years ago, okay, two years ago, one out of 25 cars sold was electric, one out of 25. And this year, 
it will be one out of five cars sold will be an electric car. And it's skyrocketing around the world. So these are going very strongly. And uh, uh, we will see that the governments who make the right policies to support these clean energy transitions will not only help their economies by reducing the oil and gas imports from other countries, not only helping the, uh, their uh, environment and uh, supporting the global action on climate change, but they will also make sure that the, their economies are uh, being modernized going from uh, the old economy. So it's also an economic uh, issue. From COP28, I have many expectations, but uh, if I can uh, put two of them together, one is support from the advanced rich countries and the international financial institutions for financial uh, help for the developing countries, clean energy transition, this is one. And the second, uh, strong commitments from oil and gas industry in order to show the world that they really, really is underlined, uh, are interested to address climate change uh, question. I am looking forward to see this commitment from the energy industry. So these are my two expectations among others for the COP28 in Dubai. All right, uh, Mr. Birol, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, News Center, giving us your view on uh, the outlook for energy and the outlook for energy transition as well. We're going to take a short break here, but up next, Union government has slashed subsidies on electric two-wheelers under the FAME scheme. We dissect the decision in a conversation with Anshul Gupta, Managing Director at Okaya EV, and Shamshed Devan, Senior Vice President of ICRA, when we are back. Don't go anywhere.